Information-fueled. Opinion-driven. This is Nashville's Morning News with Dan Mendes. And so, my fellow Americans. We talk news. 807, Nashville's Morning News on Super Talk, 997 WTN. Welcome on to your Tuesday, July 16th. A lot going on. I want to welcome on into the program Hans von Spakovsky from the Heritage Foundation. Hans, always great to have you on. And Dan, I, I, thanks. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Uh, absolutely. Now, I've, I've got this question because I've been reading a lot about this Project 2025 and right. about how, you know, the uh, New Republic notes that Project 2025 is a remarkably detailed guide to turning the United States into a fascist paradise. Now, I think there's a lot of fear mongering going on. That's number one. And number two, they're trying to uh, they're trying to say basically that Project 2025 is, you know, a a Donald Trump policy book, and it's not. It's the Heritage Foundation. Trump has his own policy book. But can we talk a little little bit about Project 2025? Because I'm I'm kind of flipping through it. I mean, it's 920 pages. So clearly, I mean, I can't go through all of that. But what is it they're so afraid of? And, And describe what Project 2025 is. Sure. And what the New Republic says is a complete and absolute lie. And folks are not forget, New, the New Republic is the same magazine that is comparing Donald Trump to Adolf Hitler. OK, yep. and that's how just how crazy and outrageous. Here, here's what happened in 2022. The Heritage Foundation got together um, a large number of conservative think tanks and organizations. We're now up to, I think, 120 organizations participating in this. And several hundred experts and people who had worked in various agencies of the federal government, from the Department of Justice to the Department of Defense, in multiple administrations. And we said, look, if you were in, put in charge of these agencies in the federal government, how would you reform them? And the purpose was to bring them back in line with what they're supposed to be doing as opposed to all the things that they are doing, which they're not supposed to be doing under the laws uh, that they are to enforce. And the result was a 900 page, as you mentioned, policy book. There's a chapter on every major federal agency that talks about how those agencies need to be reformed. And for any anybody who has heard that stupid claim from the New Republic, yeah, look, this is no secret. Go, go to the website at project2025.org. Pick one of the chapters. Pick a department you're interested in, maybe the Department of Education, maybe the Department of, of, of Defense. Read that one chapter, and I'm willing to bet you you're going to come, come out of it saying, you know, this is common sense. This is what the government ought to be doing. And, and you'll just discount these ridiculous criticisms. Well, you, I mean, you watch Washington, D.C. far closer than I do, Hans von Spakovsky from the Heritage Foundation. Um, the, the agencies have a lot of power. And so right. I think it, it's, it's clear that oftentimes if you've got a Republican president and they're dealing with these agencies, even though the president is able to, you know, sort of appoint people to certain agencies and so forth. The problem is that the agencies in Washington, D.C., they're infused with, uh, you know, people who are clearly leftist and and Democrats. And so part of Project 2025 is to try and get that under control. That is correct. And that's what the new republic is scared of. They know that there is a fourth branch of government now called the administrative state. And it's these very large uh bureaucratic agencies and like when i was at the department of justice i can tell you 90 95 percent of the career people working there were left-wing democrats and when a republican president came in they did everything they could to stop his policies to stop his priorities from being put in place to do everything they could to sabotage whatever he wanted to do and that's a real problem in Washington. And what what the New Republic doesn't want to have happen is they don't want these bureaucrats having less control over America's everyday lives, and they don't want these bureaucratic agencies um, 
they don't want them to be, have less control or less intrusion into what state governments are supposed to be doing, because that's, in fact, what's been happening now for decades. So let me let me ask this. If you, so Donald Trump goes in or any Republican goes in and they can, you know, appoint certain people to certain agencies. And but those leaders of those agencies, I mean, they're fighting an uphill battle if they're not Democrat. Right. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. Wow. All right. So um, Donald Trump a, a while ago, a few weeks ago, uh, actually disavowed Project 2025. There's a lot of folks um, within the Heritage Foundation, within this particular Project 2025, that are former uh, Trump I- administration officials. And so you're right. I mean, there's one of the things that I said before you came on was that there's a lot of organizations that are sort of competitors, if you will, in in the world of these sort of organizations. But you've all sort of banded together now to come up with Project 2025, again, including a lot of uh, former Trump administration officials. Were you perplexed, even though it's not officially part of the Trump, you know, transition? But were you surprised that the president came out and and I I would say it was a disavowing of Project 2025? Did that rattle some cages? Well, look, if you look at what he said, look, he's in campaign mode. And everybody was saying, well, this was his plan. He put it together. And what he was saying was, no, I I didn't do this. And he's right. We put this together. We hope that whatever president is elected in November will use this as a guidepost um, for how the federal government should be run. Now, Joe Biden gets elected. He's very likely not to, given the criticism. Right. If if uh, Donald Trump is elected, we hope he'll look at it. But, uh, I mean, by disavowing it, he was saying, look, I didn't do this, and he's right about that. But, look, he hasn't read the 900-page manual, and I, I hope that, for, for example, if he does get elected, um, that he will then take a look at it and or tell the people that he's putting into all these various departments to take a look at it. Cause I think if once he finally reads it, I think he'll have the same reaction that I think the American people will, which is to say, these are needed reforms. They're common sense. And all of these claims out there being made, including by the Biden administration are a bunch of lies. I mean, the Biden campaign put out a list of things they claim that, that this, policies policy proposals do and they're all complete fabrications dan i mean the the most obvious one is they say oh this will get rid of no-fault divorce across the country the word divorce is mentioned nowhere in this policy book and why would it be this is about how the federal government should be run divorce is a state matter hans von spakovsky is joining us from the heritage foundation talking about Project 2025, very controversial, I guess, in some circles. I I think, um, Hans, part of what's going on is that they know, the Democrats know, that nobody is going to read through 920 pages of a policy book. They're just not. I mean, frankly, most people probably wouldn't even understand it. So, So they're using Project 2025 as sort of a cudgel against Donald Trump by, number one, saying that this is his policy when it's not. And number two, by lying about its contents. So how do you how do you as a think tank at the Heritage Foundation combat that when not only the Democrats do uh, do the lying about Project 2025, but also uh, the the media backs them up on that? Well, look, that's a problem. Uh, Conservatives and average Americans face constantly uh, because the left has totally infected academia, the media, <laughs> and the corporate world. And we, we just keep doing everything we can to put, to put the truth out there. And, and, you know, I don't know what else we can do other than that. I will say that what we hope happens is, look, this isn't the first time Heritage has done this. The first time we came up with a policy manual like this was when Ronald Reagan was elected. And and very fortunately, at his very first cabinet meeting, Ronald Reagan, after he looked at this, thought, boy, this is such a great idea. He gave a copy of our manual to every member of his cabinet, every secretary, and said, you all need to read this 
because it's got good reforms in it. And we're hoping that the same thing, you know, will, will happen with this. Uh, the idea that this is fascism is ridiculous because the whole point of this is to give the federal agencies in Washington less power. <laughs> That's a great point. That's a great point. Less power yep. over state governments, over everyday folks. Fascists are people who want to have the federal government, the central government, have complete control over our lives. And that's what the new republic is pushing, and that's what they fear is taking power away from federal agencies. Well, I I can imagine, too, I read that there's a lot. For some reason, I think 63% was the number that I read, but... A Wall Street Journal did point out that with Project 2025, there is a lot there that you have in common with uh, Donald Trump's uh, transition and policy playbook, which I think is called Agenda 47 or Project 47. So a lot of these values that are in these two different policy books, there's a lot there that is the same, I'm assuming. I mean, that's what the Wall Street Journal reported. Yeah, no, that's true. And a lot of it is also in the in the uh, uh, Republican Party party platform. But like I said, the, what people need to understand is, is that the several hundred people that put this together were all people who had worked in the agencies they were writing about. Uh, I contributed to the section on the Department of Justice. I, I worked there as a career lawyer for four years. I wrote the chapter on the federal election commission mm-hmm. oh by, by the way can I, I let me tell you a quick story about this about how nutty the media is all right the guardian you know which is this london left-wing newspaper did a hit piece on me last week and they criticized me for the piece i had written about the fec you know why <laughs> because um the the federal election commission you know enforces federal campaign finance laws but they've only got civil enforcement jurisdiction. The U.S. Department of Justice has criminal enforcement jurisdiction. And what I said was that a new president ought to make sure that the Department of Justice isn't taking positions on the enforcement of laws contrary to what the Federal Election Commission is saying. In other words, the public shouldn't be put in a position where you have one federal agency saying, oh, yeah, what you're doing is legal. Yeah. And the other federal agency is saying, oh, no, no, what you're doing is illegal. And they criticize me for saying that. I, uh, I'm, I'm watching. I'm just, I'm, I want to read this. I can't because I'm on the radio. I didn't know this had uh, come out. But I love the uh, picture that they have of you, Hans, where you're, you're there and uh, you've got some binoculars in your hands. And you're the man, uh, they say, who cries voter fraud, uh, peddling election security fears. Here, here's the thing is that. And I haven't read this, but anybody who is out there asking questions about the legitimacy of our elections, there's some very serious questions about that. And so The Guardian and some of these other left wing outlets, what they're going to do is they're going to attack anyone who asks questions. And it's always been like that, because what's happening is you are you're standing up to the bureaucracy of the Democrats and you're standing up to the Democrat party. So this doesn't surprise me at all. And, um, you know, I, I'm going to delve into this here in a little bit because, you know, um, Hans, what they say is you really haven't made it until you've been blasted by the guardian. So congratulations. <laughs> That's true. By the way, one of the criticisms in there of when I was a County election official was that I was super vigilant. And I'm like going, what? What, don't you want election officials to be super vigilant? Isn't that what you want? (laughs) Don't you want? Well, they don't want free and fair elections. And so I (laughs) myself find that kind of funny. Clearly, they don't want free and fair elections. But you and I have spoken about that for years. Uh, Hans, thank you very much for uh, shedding some light on Project 2025 and uh, looking forward to speaking to you again very soon. It is 822 on Nashville's Morning News on Super Talk, 99.7 WTN.